Tell me, though, what's his technique? That last strike, it seems invincible. Hello and welcome to Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. My name is Connor McKenna. I'm Rebecca Hart. I'm Carl Snow. And I'm Omar Guerrero. Yep. The game's uh, all here. Yeah, yeah, we're joined by Omar, yeah. which is good, and also by ourselves, which is also good. Um, and uh, yeah, so we're here to talk about Iron Fist Heart of the Dragon issue two. Uh, first off, because I forgot last time, I want to thank our patrons, uh, Carl, who's here right now, and Ray. Thank you guys for supporting us and being on here. And uh, the uh, as for Iron Fist news, I really I want to spend like thirty seconds on this. There's like as even Carl said on the Facebook post, take it with a heavy grain of salt. Vague rumors that there might be Power Man and Iron Fist show being considered. So. Um, I thought that was worth mentioning, and I think I think we're all in agreement that we would like to see that. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, that would be nice. Yeah, because the the episode we got of Power Man and Iron Fist was pretty good. So, yeah, I'd like to see what the MCU kind of put the money behind it did because uh, so far the TV seems pretty good. Right, I agree. I was uh, very pleased with the latest episode of WandaVision that they are. Mm-hmm. Roughly following the comic. Yeah, and they're also, um, for Falcon and the Winter Soldier, it's, uh, some of the episodes are R-rated. Ooh. Oh, really? Yeah. Well, 15 for anywhere that isn't America, but R-rated in America. Do they say F-Batman? Probably. <laughs> yeah, there's probably some F-bombs and extreme violence. I'm, I'm guessing it's for violence, yeah. I mean, obviously it's not yeah, going to be It'll be for sure. But it's, it's kind of, it's good news in that a lot of people wondering what they would, you know, like how the um, Disney Plus Marvel would, uh, mm. I don't, if it would be very Disney. I'm too jaded over the Netflix cancellations, and I haven't, like, I'm not like an MCU guy, so I'm not that keen for anything. Um Ever. Come on. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, just remember the whole Winter Soldier concept was stolen from Judge Dredd. Just remember that. Well, I didn't know that actually. Um, oh, you did? yeah, I didn't know that too. No. Oh, There's so yeah. much comic stuff stolen from Judge Dredd. I'm hardly going to hold it against them. True, true. Judge Jeez. Dredd's been going for what? Forty-five years. Right. It it's like high? and. and it's like it incredibly has had daily. an incredible influence on everything. So I mean, like you can't really. Well, it depends. It depends how <laughs> how directly it's like copied. It's cause... not very directly. Um, um, okay. Pretty much like ten years before Winter Soldier was even whispered about Marvel Comics, there was a Judge Dread. I don't. It wasn't even Judge Dread, was it? It was another series that just took place in Mega City. I, yeah, exactly. It, it wasn't exactly a sort of high profile thing. And like if we're really going into comics borrowing comic from comics, you're gonna go into an ever widening spiral. Well, yeah, <laughs> just it as I said though, like depends how close it is. Like but there's the, some blatant rip offs and then there's some which are more inspired. In the comic the poo basically hit the fan so they had to bring out the super weapon. Right. And so they're all talking about dethawing the super weapon and bringing the super weapon out of deep freeze. So this giant ship mm-hmm. shows up, the door opens, and it's like an old Judge Dredd with a gray beard with a huge gun. And he comes in, like, wipes everybody out, and then they go and freeze him again. Since they can't I... stop him from aging, they just have him on literally on ice. Yeah, well, they've done that now. That that oh. u- I don't think it was that unique an idea to have someone on... Maybe in superhero comics, but okay, not well, like you know. Anyway, yeah, we we could argue about this on our Judge Dread podcast, on um, our on our Winter Soldier podcast that none of us would be on. So yeah, <laughs> um, plus plus I don't know enough about Winter Soldier, so I'm completely lost anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, but, but fun fact, that's, that's the first one to be on ice, right? So well, well, fun fact, Judge Dread has been de-aged now, I think so. 
they, they mm-hmm. discovered the technology or whatever because uh, he's like <laughs> pushing yeah. 60 so uh but uh yeah so back to iron fist heart of the dragon number two uh i'm looking at the main cover here i my comics are delayed by two weeks so i don't yeah um i don't know what the variants are they usually pull out a few variants for me and if it's iron fist i generally pick up the variants unless they look awful um <laughs> you know but the main there's only what three for this one total oh, only three yeah yeah only three well, well what's that like let like a c edition looking thing with the gold trim i got i only got two variants for my one i got the for the first issue i got the aliens variant and the um mm-hmm. yeah. david aja variant and then i got the i main just got issue. The david aja one yeah 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 yeah, <gasps> yeah i don't think good uh i i got the the variant bug from my friend so thanks bud <laughs> <laughs> i mean so, it, yeah yeah if you have the variant bug for iron fist it's better than having the variant bug for like batman when you know oh, oh yeah <laughs> there's there's, there, there's some variants i get if i particularly like them i just yeah i don't i i, I have to like the art enough actually the... um you know I, it's not like i don't double buy things occasionally just not generally my um lcs because the the recent action comics run has had john ramita jr on it and his art is woeful he should not be allowed <laughs> to get away with art like that <laughs> right now um but uh anyway the covers were awful but they just give me the variants like they give me whatever cover looks better and i'm i'm happy with letting them decide that so uh, <laughs> you know. that's pretty cool though <laughs> yeah yeah that's great yeah. service man um but so the main cover is pretty good uh it's probably not as good as the yeah. last cover i don't know like i mean it's it's a nice action cover we got Iron Fist, Fat Cobra, Bride of Nine Spiders, and Dog Brother fighting uh, the undead army. Um, mm-hmm. And like a big pillar of stone in the background. Mm-hmm. And that's literally yeah. it. Yeah. Uh, any yeah, thoughts? Really, thanks, really, uh, really good artist. Yeah, actually, I don't know who did the cover for it. Um... This one? Did yeah. It okay. As long as it's not Lewis Tan, um, <laughs> I've been on a bit of a rant about him lately. It's a certain Mortal Kombat trailer, but anyway, um, I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, but you know the actually no, I'll talk about it after the show. Um, <laughs> so we start off with a cool sort of uh, exposition dump, but done. You know, with flavor. <laughs> well, it's an exposition dump, but it's also like That's a good like, exposition oh. dump. Like, yeah. uh, it's not like a seventies exposition dump. Uh, ex. Um, yeah. So I'm this is tired. this is is this or isn't this? Because I didn't go back to research because I'm old and lazy now. Um, the eighth city. Isn't, isn't this the prison he was trapped in? Who was trapped in? Iron Fist. Oh, yeah, so the Eighth City. I'm assuming it is, because there's yeah. seven cities, and then there's the Eighth City, which is, like, the yeah. one that no one likes to talk about, so... Yeah, I think that door uh, is similar to the one that Danny was trapped in. Yeah. Like yeah. the And no, none of them seem surprised that there's a hidden city or anything. They all seem like they already know about it, so... Mm. Yeah. Um... Yeah, I thought this was a really cool opening where you have this hooded figure walk her with a bucket. And I didn't actually know this was Taskmaster until he took his hood off because I just thought it was like some, I don't know, weird yeah. cultist or something. But uh, it was <laughs> really cool. I don't understand the bucket over the head thing, but hey, whatever. Bucket over the head? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, that's just some ritual, I guess. We'll find out more once we find out who the villain is and my microphone stops falling over oh, <laughs> oh my god uh but i i thought it was cool the bucket over the head thing i like it uh and it also oh, yeah, it was... uh... shows taskmaster in a subservient role as well um, uh, yeah. you know yeah. 
Like, like he's not... Like, yeah, he's just doing the job, but he's also pouring a bucket of blood over himself, which is not He's like... obviously obeying instructions, which is something yeah. he isn't always great at. Yeah, you, usually it's like he'll just take the job, deliver the thing, that's it, but he's pouring gross blood all over himself, so it's like, is he in this for personal reasons, or is he just, you know, it's a powerful client. How much they so, pay him, you know? Yeah. Um, oh. But, uh, yeah, really, really cool opening. And the, the... Yeah, no, it's really good here. It describes the door as, like, it. it's not that a, you know, it's there as kind of like a dam... You know, so don't want to open those floodgates. And we have a hidden dragon. Ooh. Yeah, so yeah, there's uh-huh. lots of dragons in this issue. <laughs> so the, um, hit, the eighth city has its own dragon, and it's called the hidden dragon, and it is no longer hidden. I'm guessing the hidden dragon is bad. Um, might not be uh-huh. though. Who knows? And then we then we get yeah. the uh, you know. Recap page, uh, we have Larry Harmer, the writer, David Wachta, the artist, Niraj Menon, the color artist, VCs Travis Lane, the letterer, Billy Tan and Lena Jin, the cover artists, uh, Marcos Martin, Emma Lupacino, and David Curiel, the variant cover artist, so that's three variants, I guess. Or it might be two variants, I'm not sure. Anyway, yeah, I think it's two. the rest of the editors and stuff, you know, they get enough money. Um, LAUGHTER but yeah, and then we get a very different scene, the opposite actually, in the heart of heaven. I like this. Uh, yeah, beautiful. This is great. Mm. You know, journey to the west, fun memories. Yeah. Uh, the it's the pagoda of universal compassion, <laughs> which I quite <laughs> liked. Um, oh, also, I I looked into foo. Since uh-huh. we were remembering him last time. So yeah. he built the one robot. Uh, he died at some point, which is why Danny was the only one who could see him. And then when Danny killed the god, he popped out of the god because that was how he came back to life. Right. And he also okay. built the portals. He was like the Kunlun technology guy. Um, and now he's just hanging around, I guess. So, yeah. Uh, that, that refreshed my memory, which was nice. Um, yeah. And he's fun. Yeah, he is. He's good. Uh, he he can be the comic relief character, so Danny doesn't have to. Yeah. He's Iron Fist's version of Batmite. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's Batmite. Well, he's not as bad as Batmite. <laughs> yeah, um, he's so, this is the primary location where the avatar of the Mother of Mercy manifests herself, Quan Yin, who popped up at the end of the last issue carrying a dead, uh, uh, beautiful daughter, tiger, princess person. In yeah. those words, in some order. Um, <laughs> I think it's Tiger's beautiful daughter. Yes, I think you're right. Yeah, Tiger's yeah. beautiful daughter. So Daddy... I didn't know I knew that, though, until you said that, so... Daddy goes in and he sees water on the ceiling, which was a cool visual. This is a beautiful page, generally. It's yeah. A, it's a beautiful concept. Yeah. Of the sort of yeah. where the water starts and him going upwards into water, like things being upside down. Yeah. And he goes up. Uh, and he sort of emerges, which is a pretty funny panel when he's, like, emerging. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh... And Kuan Yin is the quest giver. She's like, you got to save the dragon's iron fist. If you fall, fail, all under heaven is lost. You know, evil will be in balance, blah, blah. It's all bad. Blah, blah, blah. blah you know, blah. you obviously don't want the hearts of these dragons to be taken by some weirdo behind a big door. And, uh, yeah. So, yeah, the hidden city is up to no good. And really cool imagery of all these dragons. Oh, that's all eight right there. So the bottom left one must be the hidden dragon because of its coloring, or it could be the one. It could be the one on the left that's looking straight up. Yeah, and our, that's, in, cur- that's mm, currently coiled yeah. around her head because mm. he's blackish in color. Also, you want to say the dragons because in Eastern mythology the dragons are generally like benevolent. So. Um, Except for this hidden dragon. We don't know. Maybe it's benevolent. We don't know. He may um, just... Yeah. So... Let's not judge him too early. 
his name is actually Ernie. <laughs> but uh, or, or, or the hidden dragon. So Daddy's getting visions of all these cities under attack through the water and stuff. Um, I don't. I'm pretty sure there's a significance uh, to the water in mythology. I just can't remember it. Um, but I know a lot of dragons were associated with water. But anyway, uh, so oh yeah, she even says the eighth city. Mm-hmm. So it has to be. Um, but she then tells him, which surprised me, he has to marshal the heroes of the seven cities and the heroes of Earth. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, it's like, you are the immortal Iron Fist and this is your mandate, your duty, and your destiny, you know. Um, and Danny goes, I will not fail you. It's my, you know, the surviving mortal weapons and I will see to it. Uh, so... Then she says, take heart and remember that when your feet stand close to the great change men call death, I will send forth oceans of compassion to wash away your fear. So that's obviously foreshadowing for something that's going to happen. Yeah. Um, yeah I was wondering earlier, uh, when I was reading this, why Iron Fist was the one chosen of all the immortal weapons. And then when she mentioned the heroes of Earth, that, uh, Danny has to marshal all of them, uh, you know, at least a few of them there. So I guess that's why he's the point person for this for this quest. Yeah, yeah, because he's the link between Earth and. Uh, but there's also the fact the last time they teamed up, he was the leader of the immortal weapons, essentially. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. In the that's... Eighth City. Uh, and then yeah, so Danny's just outside again. And not even the, the whole pagoda's gone. Well, I yeah. wasn't sure if the pagoda was gone or if it was like. I think it is. I think, yeah, I think I thought that's what I took from it that it was just gone. I really like the door that uh, of the eighth city or whatever that was really cool. Yeah. In the, in the dream, reminds me of um, was it Du, the underworld that was used in uh, Carrie Andrews and um, Clay Chapman's runs. Yeah. 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 Um. But yeah, so she said, like, yeah, they need portals for all the cities to manifest on Earth, uh, which kind of happens back in that uh, Iron Fist Wolverine story. Yeah. Well, we're not to ever discuss that. That wasn't that bad. It was horrendous. Oh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that at all. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't think it was that bad. <laughs> like, I think it was just average, you know. Um, uh-huh. And yeah. it did have the the cool idea of uh, the hand wanting his um, chi. Probably. Yeah. Uh, but I, food... I guess it was typical 2000, early 2000 stories, so that's fine. Yeah. It was better than the two issues where he fights Davos, who took over Kunlun. Mm. The, the 90s one. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, you know, I have to reread that one. I, I, I forgot what that was about. It, yeah, it's... Anyway. <laughs> uh, so it turns out Fu's already built um, the thing. Which is like, where is that, anyway? The monster portal. I don't know, it's on a floating barge, though. I can yeah, I have that. no idea where that is. It's pretty it's weird. Also... Yeah, you have to wonder what, how, how Fu was doing this. Uh, well, he, he's been out for how long? Uh... When was Living Weapon? Well, 2013 was the last one, I think. Yeah, maybe 14. Yeah, or 14. Yeah, so he's he hasn't popped up since then, so I guess this is what he's been doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, makes sense. Yeah, but uh, so yeah, that's I love how he's like wearing a hard hat, <laughs> just ordering yeah. these. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Kunlun oh, citizens God. around, I guess? I don't know. God knows who they yeah. are. <laughs> the, yeah. However, the, the citizens don't get hard hats because they don't matter. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, to food, yes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I, I'm sorry, but the front of that machine looks like, like a bearded guy with his hands on his cheeks looking pathetically sad. <laughs> yeah, I, I see thought it. it looked like a guy puking. <laughs> I just thought it looked like a machine. Um, okay. <laughs> it's a depressed, depressed transformer. Why is his arms aren't 
His arms are the same colour as his beard, then, not his head, so it doesn't make any sense. Yes. Uh, 2015 was the last living weapon. Wow. 2015, okay. I didn't expect it was that late. Six years. And, uh, so I like how Luke and Danny are kind of, like, grumbling about how they're going to get the heroes to show up. Yeah, yeah. Because Marvel heroes these days are always embroiled in their, like, dark events and stuff like that. So, you know, and Luke's like, well, why would they show up? And then Pei's like, because they're heroes! (laughs) (laughs) Which I really thought was funny. Um, It's sweet. Yeah. It's like, oh, Pei, you haven't been reading X-Men, have you? Um, The X-Men are still heroes. Jeez. Mm. I don't know. Um, have you been reading... Wait a second. I've had to read back. it. Have you been reading it? I've had to read it for another show, and it was painful. What, yeah, but you're not reading the X-Men regularly on a weekly basis. No, I'm not reading it right now, but like... Right, so you've read a bit of X-Men. Yes, and that... Like, there were jerks in that, so... Right, well, they've just set up as a set of heroes again. Okay, well... They, they still have a precedent for being jerks. Like Cable okay. with his stupid utopia. Island. Anyway, look, let's not go into X-Men. Um, okay. But, uh, yeah. So, cosmic balance, blah, blah, blah. You know, bad guys win equals cosmic balance is bad. So, Fu activates this portal. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, we get some cool stuff. There's, like, a holes opening in the sky and everything. It's really good graphics. And I love the fact that the sky goes kind of, like, purple and orange and blue. Yeah. Psychedelic mm-hmm. colours. You know, like, so you know... And this one actually... Yeah, you know, it actually looks a lot like... Uh, I don't know if you agree with me. It looks like the Castle of Grayskull from He-Man. Ah, it does From this it. angle, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't know if you agree. <laughs> but that's how it looks to me. That's funny. It does look a bit like that. I like how the rings are, like, lifting up as the portals yeah. open as well. Like, the machine's in motion. Um, so I don't know where this is. It, Fu's it's in, a pretty handy guy. <laughs> it's in, like, this big basin. Yeah. And there's, like, a gate yeah. there. Um, uh. And he's building on Earth as well. Oh, I guess it makes... Obviously, he's building it on Earth. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, yeah, so the three portals open, and they all, they all come out striking a pose... Uh, we have Dog Brother answers the call and stands ready to defend the heart of heaven. Fat Cobra can do no less. Show me the foes and I shall smash them into bloody puddles. Bride of Nine Spires will send the undead warriors back to the hell that spawned them. Um, okay, fat, is Fat Cobra covered in tattoos? Uh, yeah, isn't that on his back? Let me look it up. I forgot about that fun too. I gotta find out what issues he was in. And he is, was you're the, right. What kind of series he makes a bunch of appearances? Or Black he, Panther? Yeah. yeah, Agents of Wakanda or something. He was in Defenders. And yeah, it was, yeah he, he should have tattoos all over him. Um, yeah, that's right. That's right. Uh, oh, uh, the guy who illustrated uh, Mortal Weapon, number one, where mm-hmm. Fat Cobra's uh, origin story was... Uh, was uh, told, was illustrated by Miko Suwayan, who actually had his birthday yesterday. Oh, yeah. <laughs> happy days birthday. Ago, yeah, yeah he's, he's Filipino, and I got him to sign my, my copy of uh, Mortal Weapons 1. Nice. Excellent. Cool. That's pretty good. Um... Yeah, he's a, he, he's, a, he's a really nice guy. You guys should see him if, if he ever appears in cons. He's really nice. And he's actually very funny too. So It's been a long time since I've read Immortal Weapons, but I remember really enjoying it. Um, it's, been a, it's been a long time since I've been to a convention. <laughs> I know, me too, right? <laughs> yeah. Freaking COVID. Thanks a lot. COVID. And then we get the last the last portal... The, the Citadel, uh, Bao Fu, which I'm assuming is the hidden city, the 8th city. Now, the, dark tower. the portal the portal that opens up is green. Not sure if that's, like, foreshadowing. I was thinking maybe, because Prince of Orphans is obviously absent, but, like, noticeably yeah. absent. So I'm like, mm-hmm. 
you know, my my conspiracy in my in my head is maybe like my current theory is either he's become a bad guy again, or they have him captured or something, or he's and if he's a bad guy, he's probably doing it for some higher purpose or something. Um, but yeah, uh-huh. that, was, that was just my thoughts, just from the color green. But you know. His whole uh-huh. thing is green mist, so... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't mind seeing him again. I like him. Yeah. Big fan. And ever, yeah. ever, all the other weapons are accounted for. Yeah. So... Um, well, except for uh, the crane lady, because Davos was her champion. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, But I'm not, uh, I'm not sure what happened to her. Yeah. Yeah, you have to wonder who, who replaced Davos as a champion. Yeah. Um, anyone. Yeah, well, I, I can't remember if what happened to the crane mother herself, if she's still around or not. Um, well, her city still is, obviously. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, true. Um, yeah, so the portal opens up and, you know... Dan's like, like, screw this scaffolding. We're yeah. We're the fight to him. Yeah, they're, they're, they're like, no time to gather forces because other portals are open. And yeah, we got to go in. Um, yeah. It's a cool, cool charging shot of uh, Pei, Danny, Fu, you know, the, the whole gang. All Luke, of them. The yeah. whole gang. And Bork. Uh, Gork, sorry. Gork, Gork. yeah. Yeah. Uh, co- uh, you know, cool to see the weapons again, though, even if Fat Cobra's missing his tattoos. Um, yeah. Which is a bit odd, right? Because this artist has, you know, Paid a lot of attention to the previous yeah, and also styles. Seems to be quite a detailed artist, so it's mm-hmm. it's like weird because the backgrounds are so detailed, and you look at a uh, Bride of Nine Spiders like clothes from behind, and it's got all the corsetry and stuff like yeah. that. Yeah. So it, it's like it doesn't seem like the kind of person who just miss out the tattoos to save some time. Yeah. Right. Considering the sort of detail everywhere else. Yeah. It's just a slip up, I guess. Yeah. Um... Yeah. And have to uh, put some blame on the editor too because uh, they're the ones who are yeah well to... Marvel's yeah, editors yeah, sure. are not covering themselves in glory uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean they missed out on Bay being too young so yeah. I wouldn't be surprised they missed out on tattoos on Fat Cobra just be thankful there's not a single panel of Luke Cage's head looking like a giant thumb. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you'd let us know if there was, though. <laughs> oh, yes, I would. It's just, yeah, sometimes with art, uh, you know, art mishaps, you just wonder how it made it to publication. <laughs> but, but, um, so they all charge in, and I like how they all have different takes on this situation. So Fat, Fat Cobra's like, they have fled an abject fear of our righteous wrath. Yeah. Uh, dog brother, they work behind bolted doors and shutters to take us unawares. Brian Ryan Spiders sense that the buildings are empty. Um, and Pei was excited to give them a thrashing. Uh, yeah, she was up for it. Um, but uh, Danny, uh, although I like Fat Cobra's like, little sister, never be disappointed at a fight that didn't happen. Yeah, that's good advice. His fat cobra is wisdom. Um, but it's cool to see, like, Bride of Nine Spiders, and, and Dog Brother, I guess, but I, I think Bride of Nine Spiders is cooler, personally. But, like, I just like seeing her talk and do stuff. Yes. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> she's really the scary one. Because she's, I don't know, she's just, like, she's an interesting character to me. And, like, Fat Cobra... Probably like a lot of other people besides Prince of Orphans is my favorite, but he's he's showed up a few times. So, you know, um, he's quickly becoming very popular. It wouldn't shock me if he shows up in the Shang Chi movie. That'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So, Danny thinks that the buildings aren't completely empty. He's catching vibes, yeah, he you know. Yeah. And Luke's like, it feels haunted here. Um, so they kind of stroll forward. And yeah, ambushed by undead. Well, yeah, neither alive or dead. So yeah, undead, I guess. Um, it's a scene straight out of Jim Carter. 
Did any of us get karate. that? Or... 80s karate movie is horrible. Right, horrible. right. All right, well, I won't watch it. Um... Uh, guy decides to combine gymnastics and karate for the ultimate martial arts. And he's oh, gonna go wait. Fight contest. I've seen okay. some of that. I'm sure you've seen it, but there's the town of, like, the crazy dead. Yeah, yeah. Where he fights in the center, which is, like, what this shot is, like, setting up. Yeah. Uh, it's a cool shot, though. It is. Um, oh, yeah. The yeah. artwork's fantastic. Could not complain about this so artwork. The guy looks like a Ninja Turtle, too. The one on the right, in the middle, uh... it looks like a Ninja Turtle. Oh, the one in the back, yep. Yeah, I, I don't really they, see it. What? I remember David Wachter used to to draw Ninja Turtles before doing Iron Fist. So hmm. I think that may be a nod to the Ninja Tur- Turtles there. There's some, there's some definitely touches of Ninja Turtles hidden in the crowd. I just, I don't, I don't see it. He sure is not just. I don't fully see it. Right. Go, go saying. down. Go down to the panel where it's the close-up of the guy being introduced that I'm not going to discuss yet, and look who's directly over his left shoulder. Mm-hmm, yeah. Even with the brim of the hat, that could be a Ninja Turtle mm-hmm. in a heartbeat. Yeah, I yeah. mean, you guys there, I see, maybe. I see it. He just person seems person like a ghoul pe- to me. The person he just seems over. like a zombie with like bandages over his face to me. The, well, I'm talking about like the guy who's the current style art the way the lines are around the eyes, the way the eyes are shaped, the nose, mm-hmm. right. all that. Yeah, the nose. I don't really know much about the Ninja Turtles, though, so... Yeah, I, I, I haven't... Your word for it. I haven't read then, this guy's Ninja Turtles. And then you go over to the other side of him, the other shoulder, it looks like mum Ra's poking above his shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> mum Ra, yeah. Speaking of this guy, who has an awesome entrance, by the way, yeah. Like, wow. He does, this, he does the superhero landing. Yeah. yeah like the evil superhero proud. landing. <laughs> With a stupid cape. So this is Midnight Sun. Dun, dun, dun. Uh, another martial arts villain. Uh, is he from, what, is he from Africa, right? What? No, I can No? You sure? Master Kung Fu second appearance. Yeah, no, but Midnight was- Sun himself. Wasn't he originally Shang Chi's like brother or some crap? Uh, uh, it's been a long time since I read that book. Let me look. He's it up. from by, Africa. By a long time, I mean like thirty freaking years. Connor is years. right. He began life as a child in a small African village, which Fu Manchu was using as headquarters. And, and yes, he was, he was raised alongside yeah, Shang Chi. His adopted yeah, brother. Yeah. But uh, you were right that he was African. Wow, so we were both right. That's weird. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> it's never going to happen again. So yeah, that's know. true. <laughs> um, and uh, so you got to wonder if Marvel was sitting around the table going, uh, "We got to stop putting black in front of all our black characters. <laughs> Let's use midnight instead." <laughs> uh, um, so talk about like who is this guy? And uh, Luke knows him. Calls himself Midnight Sun. Thinks he's bad. Fu finds that amusing. Uh, then we cut away <laughs> to Wakanda, where a city's popped up. A giant Asian city. Yeah, she, yeah she's like, oh, it's just some Asian city. And I'm like, well, I mean, there's, you know, different paths and stuff, but whatever. Um, to be fair, she might not, you know, be schooled in all the different types of architecture. And lot, if it is one of the... A lot of, of the... people aren't, and they don't get away with it. I'll just say that much. Um, yeah, like it, it's, it's one of the immortal cities as well. I mean, I yeah. I don't know. I, I give her a little bit of a little bit of leeway there. Is this a named character or is this just someone? Uh, I don't know if she does name. Yeah, she yeah. called. Yeah, it's a Koye. Okay. Um. So she's told Black Panther, "Hey, a city's just popped up," and he's just like, "All right, well, can stuck to discreet re- re- reconnaissance, scouted out, and she's." There's sees, reports uh, coming on all over the world about similar manifestations, so that's... Yeah, um, where else it's going to pop up? No, the portal's all opened. <laughs> Hopefully it pops up wherever Peter Parker's living to make his life mm-hmm. worse. Um, but, uh, yeah, so... There's definitely going to be one in New York, let's face it. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. There should be right three in, in New Central York. Central Park, <laughs> of course. <laughs> 
<laughs> Peter Parker's going to try to get Chinese Mike. food. <laughs> I think I think Spider Man probably one of the first responders because he's always showing up in other books. Mm-hmm. So you know he always gets caught up in mystical stuff back in the day. Uh, but uh, yeah, so she's saying there's something not right about the invaders, and then she sees a big dragon flying above her. Um, so I'm interested to see who's leading the force in that city to kill the dragon. Yeah, because uh, yeah. we don't see that. Um, we might see Black Panther fight whoever it is next issue. Um, Mm -hmm. Which I guess I wouldn't count Black Panther as a martial arts character, but he is, like, one of the best at it in the universe. Yeah, Um, exactly. There's definite nods to him, because, like, isn't there in one of the... in, like, Shadowlands or one of them where they said they learnt a move from Black Panther or he learnt a move from them? It wouldn't surprise me, yeah. (laughs) I know, I know which issue I'm talking about, but the ability to find it would take me a while, so yeah. Mm. And we cut back to a really awesome shot of that dragon. Yeah. So, like, it gives dragon you a really a, a oh. sense of the size and scale and what it would feel mm. like to have a dragon fly above you, like an airplane or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know? Uh... It has wings, though. Just I don't know about you guys. I mean, I'm happy to see dragons that aren't Shaolau. Not, yeah, that yeah, I, yeah, me too. not that I was like, oh, we only ever see Shaolau. Like, seeing Shaolau was Gork. always cool. And Gork, yeah. Yeah. Who is also Shaolau, though. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> um, but, but somehow cuter. <laughs> but different dragons. It's a, it's, it's a pleasant surprise, I think, is a it better is way nice of putting it. See dra- I just think it's nice to see dragons in a comic. Yeah, like, that are drawn generally. well. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah, different shapes. The other you know, stupid Venom from... dragon. <laughs> Venom everything. <laughs> oh, in the moment in King in Black, there's dragons, but they're simply dragons. Oh, God. Well, we do get some epic sound effects. Some really fun sound effects, yeah. I really it's like this sm- sequence. My favourite is Smoosh. <laughs> Where's... Oh, because he, oh, he's... Yeah, he's Fat just dragon. Liquefying they're actually up. really Arch. good, because like, they really do signify... The, the styles. different power levels, yeah, like like you know, Luke's is definitely a, a thump, a punch Womp. one. Then like Gork's got foosh because obviously he's breathing fire, and Pay gets a little one for like kicking Swank. someone in the <laughs> yeah. uh, let's be, you know. Um, the gonads, yeah. Then, yeah. Fact, just, <laughs> I think we... Nee, I think she's way too little, but maybe gonads. The fact Cobra gets a big twins. powerful one. Iron Fist gets a big Thwam. Iron Fisty one. Yeah, he, he takes out uh, four and, of them. And uh, the uh, Bride of Nine Spiders gets a... I'm sending lots <laughs> of little spiders at you. Yeah, whatever, yeah, whatever yeah, the sound just, effect really of well. sending spiders is. <laughs> I can't imagine being like the artist, Letterer, whoever does the sound effects. I think Letterer. And uh, having to like... I wonder who comes up with them. But There's, they're really good. They the, work very well. Yeah, and they're no, they are. very well. I mean, yeah, they're, they're all, all different. In slightly different styles, yeah. Yeah. And th- there's two things I find hilarious. The first one is that we the only thing we see of Dog Brother fighting is him getting kicked in the face. <laughs> yeah, that's a bit unfair. <laughs> and the other thing is, I love how Midnight Sun just gets uh, taken out by Briar of Nine Spiders throwing spiders at him. That's great. Um, two panels he's done. Because <laughs> A, you get to see her do something and take out an established figure, and B, it's hilarious because he's just like getting spiders thrown at him. And he's yeah. like, ah. <laughs> I guess get it, most people to leave. <laughs> well, I mean, I guess it's it. She's a bit like um, uh, that that rat of twelve plagues guy. Yeah. Um, I'm assuming yeah, the spiders yeah. aren't non toxic. Yes. Because <laughs> she's um, I guess she's kind of a good guy, but like she kills people pretty willy nilly. Like yeah. So, like I think what was that her story in Immortal Weapons was like there was people breaking into somewhere. And she killed them. They didn't seem that bad. I can't remember, but it was cool. Um, yeah, so they win, and they go to the gate, uh, although they're being chased by zombies again. Although they seem to make really short work of those. And Midnight yeah. Sun. Uh, Midnight mm-hmm. Sun fans, I'm sure, are not happy. Or they are happy because he popped up. I don't know. Uh, but he, he'd he be a pretty big deal, though, if he was uh, Shang-Chi's adopted brother. 
Like he'd yeah. be a pretty good fighter. Um, but you I know, mean, I guess yeah, yeah. you can't karate chop spiders, so no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, maybe, maybe it, dog brother, maybe dog brother wore him down a little. Who maybe, knows? maybe off paddle. <laughs> That's how dog brother fans will sleep tonight. Um, he's, I, still, well, he's still in the back alley going, "Get him off of me! Get him off of me!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah, most likely. <laughs> I like so they go to the gate and it's breaking in this. You know, evil figure is going soon, uh, and it's breaking. And then Danny just shuts the door on him. <laughs> it's like, no, nope, shut the door. <laughs> yeah, with a little tiny slam over his head. Slam. And then it ends. And you guys are right; it is a odd ending point because that yeah. just feels I mean, like the just, end of you, a page. You just, you just into it, but I guess they have to break it somewhere. Yeah. Uh, so it is kind of a, at least a cool cliffhanger because he's saying, "Not yet." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a big you Danny. shall not pass moment. Mm. <laughs> and I guess uh, then the cover of the next issue is uh, might have been the lady before. I'm not sure, but someone jumping on I think a it probably is on oh, a exactly dragon her. with sure. a spear from Wakanda. Which, um, which if she mm. kills him, that's a big boo boo on their part. Yeah, because yeah, the dragon might be good, might be bad. The dragon looks menacing, but you know. Even the friendly dragons can look menacing. Cause they're... But we also have no idea if she's going to kill him. So. Well, actually, that dragon has wings. Like, big That's wings. That's what I said so... before, that you all uh, missed. Sorry. It's okay. Uh, but, wait, back in Wakanda, was it? Yes. Hmm. Because when it's over, flying over her, you can see the wingspan. Mm-hmm. I guess Shao Lao or Gork has yeah. wings, too. All right, well... Yeah, yeah Gork does have yeah. wings. It's just, yeah, Gork it's, does. It's, they do. They they it, it they seem to be a little bit of an amalgam between East and West dragons. Right. That's all right. They're still mostly Eastern. Yeah. Um. I only know these things because I once did a crafting session at my library for making dragons out of for Chinese New Year, and you put a straw in each end so you could make them do the sort of thing, and then. One of the parents came in and said, why do they have wings? <laughs> and I was like, oh, God, like, I can't do crafts. I just picked a, a, the easiest thing to do that I felt guilty for the rest of my life. So. There's also that <laughs> the the artistic interpretation of, like, Shao Lao has changed a lot. Like, his size changes all the time. Yeah, yeah. You know, and he, he didn't have yeah. wings originally, but he did now. And then living mm-hmm. weapon and stuff. Uh, yeah, you guys are right about the ending. It just felt like the ending of a page, not an issue. But uh, I'll file that under like the quibble section. Um, yeah, I mean, like in, in the grand scheme of things, I'd rather have an issue I really enjoyed and felt sure, mm-hmm. like felt that it cut off, than yeah. have one that like like I don't know where else they would have cut it. Maybe a page before, and then it would have felt like. Like I, mm. I, yeah, I don't know. It just it seemed like a, just a cliffhanger ending. At least so it's fair. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, so I guess, guys, thoughts. I you liked it a lot. Yeah. Mm. This was a good, good pacing. I mm-hmm. like the fact that it slowed down at the beginning before we got into the action. So, yeah. not like the first issue where it, it was like uh, we jump right into the action without really understanding what was going on. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And. Here we get, you know, a little bit of breathing room for a few pages, and then uh, we get to understand a little bit more about what's at stake here. And at the end, yeah, like Rebecca said, yeah, I'd rather have uh, to be uh, to be to have this suspense suspense ending, the end. Rather than and because I already got my my action action scenes done, mm-hmm. yeah, and I I'm I'm sure, you know, uh, we'll we'll see this whoever this is, but in the door, uh, later on. So I, I like the fact that uh, it seems like Danny knows who this is. So mm. we'll be in for a surprise. I think you know maybe in the in the, the next two issues, we'll see who this is. Yeah. It's Trevor. <laughs> maybe it's... You know, maybe it's Master Khan. Hmm? 
he, he yeah, could have maybe. Got... I mean, like, I mean, he was all tied up with the dragon. dragon lords and stuff like that. So yeah, he could have uh, got knocked out off screen. Yeah. Uh, Carl, your thoughts? Good stuff. Yeah. I can't wait for the next one. Luckily, next week, the Mezco Iron Fist figure is dropping, so I'll be dropping. Is that the one twelve ninety nine? Yep. Tomorrow. The one without the sash. It's supposed to be released next week. Mm, cool. No, it, they already built in the sash. Oh, they put a they, sash in. Yeah, yeah. They listened to the to to our ranting on Twitter, and uh, <laughs> that's what's good, what's good about Mesco. And they released a few images of that, the one with the sash. Uh-huh. I was actually talking about it today. I really like the uh, foot and hand wraps he has. Mm-hmm. Um, like the rope, mm-hmm. kind of like the old Muay Thai stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not huge on like the like... costume itself, though. Mm-hmm. So that's what, $300 Australian? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think it's that bad, actually. I think it's. I think it would cost me, like, if I got it, which I won't, it would be like 120 or something. Um... Yeah, that's not too bad, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, not not worth it for like a one. I did just buy a cuddly Dalek though, you know. Yeah, <laughs> I saw. Nothing that. wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. There, there is Doctor yeah. Who merch I want, but I'll talk about that off air. Um, I'm still, I'm still dialing in my 3D printer to print my full size K9. Oh, lovely! <laughs> I can't believe you've got a 3D printer. Why? I don't had know. For, the scary part is I've had it for three years, and I just unboxed it four months ago. That's the scariest I didn't know part. you had one. So. 3D printers <laughs> hurt my brain. <laughs> it's, it's weird to me that that I, technology exists. I was honestly scared of it, to be completely honest with you. I got the thing, and I started researching, and I'm just like, what did I get myself into? <laughs> and then finally, with, with the whole COVID thing and being stuck in the house, I'm like, I'm going to unbox that thing. And I uh-huh. set it up in like three hours, and I was printing, and I was just like, okay, I was overthinking this, apparently. <laughs> Yeah. Mm. So you have, uh, are you gonna be doing an Iron Fist <laughs> statue no, or don't. something? I haven't found any good ones to do. Yeah. Not any, um, not any, I, I mean, I'm sure there's one out there you can pay one. for, but I'm just looking at the free stuff mm. right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So luckily, there's the popular ones to get. There's a guy from England. Imagine that England and Doctor Who, who. uh has put all the keen, full-size K9 files online for free. Oh, wow, that's good. But this guy's, this guy's nuts. He does nothing but, like, robots from sci-fi. He's got, like, uh, the no. forbidden my friend has planet a, robot has a, and all kinds of stuff. My friend has a Dalek and a K9 that he built. Wow. Remember the little tiny, like, 7-inch long remote control K9 that came out, like, eight years ago? Mm-hmm. Do you know what those things are going for now? No. They're like four hundred dollars. I have the Funko Pop one. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's what I have. I have the Funko Pop K9, the TARDIS, and Tom Baker coming out of it at TARDIS on my dresser. Nice. Because I'm a geek. Um. So I have no way to segue this. Uh, any other thoughts mm. about the issue, Carl? Or no. All right. Uh. uh <laughs> so we got Arvaz thoughts, Carl thoughts, Rebecca. Your thoughts. I really liked it. I, I still am blown away by the art. Yeah. Every time. I just, I, and the colouring. It's just, it still remains so different from almost every other comic I'm reading at the moment in terms of how quickly the colour palettes change. And um, and just, just the colours they're using in some of the scenes and it just works really nicely. And it gives it that kind of other otherworldly magical sense when they're doing the um the cities and the dragons yeah. and um mm. i i just really enjoying it i think it's gonna be a really good read but like part of me is just like i i feel a bit of like i want to know which heroes which other heroes get on and that, that's such a like dumb comics readery things and i want to know which other characters are going to be in because frankly i'm happy with the ones we've got yeah mm. i guess so. Uh, so I just, it's just you always want to know who you're going to see him interact with Bringing your com- yeah. digging up your comments from last episode, I actually made a note because uh, you said last episode you wish Iron Fist 
like his events tied into Marvel's world more, and I guess right. And this um, one like totally is like, oh no, yeah, no, you're yeah. gonna be this. I because I, when they were like going, oh yeah, no, you'll lead these two groups, and I was like, that's exactly what we wanted him for mm. him to do is to be this bridge between the two. Yeah. You know, not just, uh, oh, you're good yeah. at martial arts, you can join us and look after a baby or something. Yeah, Whatever punch he did it in, with your fist. Whatever he did in, King, <laughs> in, in the Avengers recently. I think it was literally hold the baby. Well, maybe, well <laughs> oh, yeah. maybe they were it Jackie Chan back. movies and they're like, all right, Iron Fist, you hold the baby, get a ladder mm-hmm. and you'll be mm-hmm. unsolvable. Um, I think it's probably like, give him the baby because he can probably do some good damage while holding a baby, yeah, unlike yeah. most of us. But yeah, <laughs> but it's still it's still very much to me like, oh, you could join this big Avengers event, <laughs> but you're <laughs> holding the baby. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of kind of like uh, Jackie Chan, what he yeah. would do. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. Uh, uh, any other thoughts? No, I'm looking for. Can't wait for the next one. Uh, like, I do. I definitely uh, feel like I could do with it faster. Yeah. yeah it's I monthly, think, right? Uh, I think the art is getting better than uh, better and better. Yeah. And uh, I think he's getting more comfortable uh, drawing Danny. So I, 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 I know. I remember uh, Rebecca saying that. Uh, She's a bit bothered not seeing... With the, uh, with the nose, yeah. I got used nose, to it yeah. there. But his, he does draw eyes very far apart for pay. So now that's his next mm-hmm. thing to work on. Is pay's eyes <laughs> need to be a little bit closer to... I did not notice. <laughs> weird. Go and look at any of the drawings of pay. I'm not... Uh, no, I don't want to ruin it. Yeah. Like with Carl's weird okay. foot thing that I haven't forgiven sorry, him for yet. Sorry, sorry. Um, no, it, it's <laughs> fine. Like you notice, you notice like weird. That's good. I'm just I'm gonna live in bliss. That's full fine. ignorance. That's, that, um, that's his Ninja Turtle hang up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Everyone's cool. like part turtle. <laughs> 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 well, Daddy, Daddy looks like a bit of a turtle. That close up of his face when he's looking at the yes. door. Um, yes, yes. When he's in the water, and the fish is like passing his face. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anything else? Then I'll get to mine, I guess. Um, yeah, give us yours. Uh, so there was a note actually I missed before. Um, so there is uh, when she asks him to get all the heroes. Uh, Danny says heroes are very different on Earth. You're ready, and say are not of single of single minds, nor all so pure of heart. Um, which a is a cool like thing because you know they're not they're not all bastions of truth, but there are plenty yeah. of people who are pure of heart, like Cats America and stuff. But uh, uh, the other thing is, I just I like the way he talks. Um, I like the more monkish feel of his dialogue. You know, the more thoughtful uh, way he speaks because you know I don't know. I just think it's cool. Um, I like Monk Danny uh, and. All my other notes. I mean, yeah, I agree with you guys, really. Like, the art's good still. Uh, I'm excited to see where it goes. Uh, I am... Tr- I don't want to get my hopes up and write this as a good series because, like, there is room for it to yeah. just go bad. Like We're still very uh, early on. Contagion like, did. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. It, it's sad. I'm, like, so burnt. Um, but at the same time, you know, uh, solo Iron Fist runs have been good recently. I, I keep yeah. saying yeah. it, Phantom Limb, Living Weapon, Ed Brisson, they've all been good, so... They you know. have, yeah, they have. They've, they, I, they've definitely got more of a, a a good hit rating than many of the stuff that's been being put out. And maybe it's because it's so few and far in between, who knows, but... Um, it maybe, may be because yeah. the people writing him now are people who really want to write him. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, it'd be interesting to see how yeah. this came about, this series. Like, yeah. Uh, you know, because... Is it a push from Marvel, which seems unlikely? Is it a push from Larry uh, Hama, which... Uh, go on. Larry Hama said that uh, Marvel actually approached him for this. Right. Because I, I, I read your interview, but I did forget about that. Because I remember... Yeah. Um, yeah, because oh, I didn't... I, I forgot the interview, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but then I have, I, have to, I have to read through my own interview. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do remember that one because I, I I was really curious if he approached Marvel for it. So it was Marvel. Yeah, who, yeah. So it was good. Yeah. Does Marvel and, have and the rights for GI Joe again? 
Or is that IDW? Because there's um, G.I. No. Joe's current runs at IDW, and okay. it's like literally coming out at the moment. I'm so. sorry, Carl, neither G.I. Joe or ROM will be appearing in this series. Uh, so, if, um... But if if they own the rights, it wouldn't surprise me if Lama, <laughs> if Lama had put in Snake Eyes as for a guest appearance. Mm, that's true. Ah, that would have been awesome. Um, yeah, so, I mean, again, like, yeah, agree with you guys, uh, I guess Black Panther will be one of the heroes, to. Well, I think Okoye. Yeah, I mean, I'll, yeah. I'll definitely her, but I feel like Black Panther would, since Artist has to gather the heroes, and he's kind of just sitting there, so. Well, well, there's, the, <laughs> there's the hero I mentioned earlier in our texts that I don't know if I should bring up now, but we don't know if that person is going to be a good guy or a bad guy. Uh, can you bring it up again? Because I forgot. Yeah, I don't know. I, I was shocked that a certain female was being brought back into the mix of the martial art world. Ring any bells? Lady Bullseye. Mantis. Oh, Mantis. Oh, Mantis. Okay. She's a bad guy, isn't she? She married an Avenger. Oh. She's I, I just... not that bad a guy, no. I remember her fighting Captain America. Um... Yeah, but they've all fought and made up. That's true. I guess Wanda, we'll see. Uh, Wanda and Vision and Mantis and uh, what was the guy's name? That uh, he looked like a knight with a mustache and a goatee. Swordsman. The swordsman, yeah. They got married on the, the. They're on the same cover. Their marriage it was a dual yeah, they marriage. Got, they got married, and their son was a uh, celestial messiah. I guess it will be interesting to see what... It all uh, comes into it in um, in Empire. If you, there's some specific issues about him, so... It, it will be interesting to see what martial arts heroes they dig up. Because we got... I don't think anyone expected to see Midnight Sun, so that was cool. No. Even though we... Mm. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it'll be cool to see who's popping up next. Uh, yeah. About uh, Misty and Colleen. Oh, oh yeah, they they, they exist. Yeah. <laughs> Forgot about yeah. that. <laughs> um. They could be there. You could see uh, Daredevil, probably. Maybe Daredevil, maybe. Although Electra's Daredevil at the moment, so you know. Oh yeah, that's right. I fear I I think Spider Man has a decent chance of showing up, but that's yeah, because um, Scarlet Spider's with in Iron Man at the moment, so um. I, I, get it. I guess he's a, he'll get the opportunity to go a bit... I'd love to see Karnak. Mm, yeah, all the all the martial arts people we've seen so far aren't A-listers. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Except Black Panther, I guess. Uh, yeah. But... but we don't know how much he's going to turn up. But, but yeah, I, yeah, I agree with you. I'd like to see him get involved because he is the one in charge. But, like, I'm just saying that, like, so we don't 100% know who yeah, he's going Yeah, w- we don't. Um, mm-hmm. I'm just assuming he will because it's like a mm. giant city that's popped up. Yeah, you would like to think your monarch would take a person. <laughs> yeah, in these things mm-hmm. like. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But yeah, it'll be interesting to see. So I, there's part of me reading things like that. That the minute they say you've got to gather a group, I'm always like, oh, I need to know who the group's going to be. <laughs> yeah. He okay. just needs to call, call Sentry and Blue Marvel and just end this. <laughs> Sentry's dead. Again? Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'll um, give it a couple issues. <laughs> he's, uh, he died at the start of King in Black, uh, but he's uh, in the Valkyrie issue, uh, he'll, he'll and I think they're trying to save him, or they're either saving him or taking him to Valhalla. I don't know what. Yeah, yeah I'll be back. He got, he got literally ripped in two. Um, the so other... He, didn't he do that to uh, Carnage? Was it Carnage or Venom? Yeah, so I think that's the that's the reference. You got I guess payback. The Captain America is a martial art. Well, again, not technically martial arts hero, but like you know, very good at like martial arts. Uh, who Danny's mm-hmm. come across, but again, I think he's too. Yeah, like, I think he's probably too high profile. If he does uh, pop up, it yeah. won't be next issue, I guess. Maybe it'll ramp up. Um, and I'll get a cameo or something. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so I guess that's it for now, because all we could do is speculate, really. Um, the next yes. issue is coming out next month, March 17th, yes. which is a bummer that it's monthly, but, um, 
hey, like half the year we have this to look forward to at least, right? So unless it gets really yeah. bad. <laughs> um, so it's, uh, we might do something in the meantime. Probably not, but maybe in a couple of weeks. Uh, I'll put like a discussion thread up again or something. Oh, we do have feedback, actually, before I forget. Ooh. So, Shut up. Uh, all right, fine. See ya. Um, no, but the... So this is feedback for the first issue from Daniel. Nice. Uh, who, Thank you, Daniel, in yeah. advance. Who is uh, also guest on Josie's Bar Dead Ever podcast, which I guest on sometimes. And he says, for the first issue, a good start to a promising mini. Love the artwork and the use of Iron Fist mythology. I missed the mini where Pei was aged up. Um, okay. But at, that probably makes it easier. <laughs> yeah. But at the end of Living Weapon, didn't all the past incarnations of Shiro Lil come back? So maybe the adult dragon Danny rides during the last ongoing was a past incarnation. It's been a while since I read it. Also, wasn't Fu some sort of Kunlun deity? But this was a fun issue. The hide and seek literally made me laugh. I look forward to reading more about the seven capital cities of heaven and their weapons. Uh, yeah, thanks for the feedback. Uh, Fu, uh, as I looked into it, uh, was a deity. He was just dead. And he came back. Um, <laughs> he came back from the body of a deity. I just love that. Uh, yeah, he wasn't dirty. He was just dead. <laughs> well, he was like a ghost. Uh, he, no, he... no, I, I get it. It just yeah. came out very funny because it's like you know, deity dead. It just, it just worked right. well as a sort of. <laughs> like yeah, if you said he wasn't a god, it wouldn't have been as funny. But um, the mini where Pei was aged up was Immortal Iron Fists. Uh, I didn't think it was yeah. that great, but, you know, uh, worth checking out if you're interested. Um, it's like a follow-up to Living Weapon I by the same writer. I didn't hate it as much as other people did, but I, I, it had issues. I think, yeah, I think hate's a strong word. Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I thought it was perfectly readable, and I wouldn't have put, but it's probably the weakest of the ones we've that have had. Out recently, yeah. Yeah, because, and more of a... Because of the aging up, because it was very sudden. And, yeah. uh, it was better than Power Man and Iron Fist, the recent one. Well, <laughs> I don't know. Actually, I think it might be That was quite a while ago like, now as well. So. Yeah, it's more of a kid's story than anything. Yeah. So I just enjoy, enjoyed it as like that. You know, I really like, like the art story as for well. kids. The, um, they had the really kind of um, had really cool art, sort of, didn't they? All the Shao Lao's coming back. Uh, was it, actually, wasn't that at the end of Power Man and Iron Fist? And, oh, was that, or it might have been at the end but of I Living Weapon. Really read all these things but again to I remember him and him and Luke fist bump, and they're going to take care of all the dragons that are running around. But that never got brought up again, and we all predicted that it would never get brought up again as well. So <laughs> yeah. I don't know where all those you other know. sixty-five. You know, <laughs> incarnations are. Uh, the adult dragon Danny was riding during the last ongoing, I'm assuming, was Gork. Uh, mm-hmm. Because I, I'm i guessing, like, with dragons aging, like, there's just no real rules and you can do whatever you want, so... <laughs> it just always seems to make sense that it'll be Gork. Plus, like, uh, the Shao Lao that was in Living Weapon that was fully grown that got killed was like an egg in Immortal Iron Fist at the end of that, so... Yeah. Um, yeah, Iron Fist continuity is a bit of a mess, and I actually have been talking with Daniel about how messy it is because he had more questions. Like, it uh, is really. Yeah. Did they just yeah, make up yeah. that there was a bunch of Iron Fist before Danny for a mortal weapon? And my answer was yes. I saw that. I saw. <laughs> I actually read that conversation this morning. I, I, I'm very in and out on on Facebook because it. I find it very overwhelming sometimes how much yeah. stuff there is. And uh, but I read through that this morning and I went, yeah, it's a mess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just I just very rarely feel I have anything to like I can add to what everyone else is saying, so I just dip in, read it, and go, oh yeah, huh? And then yeah. Um, and we also had feedback from Iron Fist eBooks on Twitter, uh, who we talked to a bit. Um, and he says yeah. this is for issue two. Yeah. And he says the entire art team continues to impress, and the lettering is pretty darn good as well. Actually, we should call out the letterer because it is good. The letter, what well, we did for the uh, for the effects, but yeah, it's yeah. Uh, the writing is a big improvement over the previous issue, with character dialogue being more defined and natural, and the story is allowed to breathe now that we're in the swing of things. The cold open was very effective at building intrigue and playing into the dark fantasy of it all. I found it funny that page seventeen spent so long with the bride saying it's quiet, too quiet, and then page eighteen had a horde of baddies appear literally in an instant between panels. 
The Wakanda tease was very effective as Iron Fist comics rarely bleed out into the wider Marvel world. I'm very excited to see how the idea develops and how Black Panther and Okoye get involved. I'm also glad to see all these side characters return. Too often new writers just ignore what came before and introduce their own ideas which immediately get pushed aside by the next writer. Building on what's established is the key to a good Marvel comic. Lastly, that ending was so abrupt but a very effective cliffhanger nonetheless. I love this issue. Uh, oh, yeah. I think, I think we're very much on the same page. Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, yeah. we, we... they probably said it much better than I did most of the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly think it would have been a better ending if the last panel was just a door cracking open with the soon. And then the, it opens up with him just shutting the door and going, nope. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Jeez, that'd be like <laughs> the last Jedi all over again. Um, but, yeah. uh, yeah. All right, cool. Thanks for the feedback, guys. Um, hope to hear from you more next month or whenever we do our next issue. Um, yeah, until next time, uh, don't touch spiders. Ever. Yes. Yeah. And also don't throw them at people. Yeah. Yeah, that would be rude. Unless it's, um, you know, a supervillain. You can do it then. Actually, yeah. don't, because people think no. all sorts of things are supervillains. So, like, that guy down the road, he's a supervillain. Um, but, uh, yeah. So, Peace. Bye. Adios. Bye. Iron Fist and all other characters in these comics are properties of Marvel and Disney. Any musical images we use belong to their respective copyright holders. We do this for fun, so please don't sue us. You can contact us at Sons of the Dragon Podcast at gmail.com. Just send us mail, comments, thoughts, anything you want, really. It doesn't even have to be related to Iron Fist. If you don't want it read on the air, though, make sure you mention that. You can also find us on Facebook, The Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, Sons of the Dragon. Our Twitter, at Iron Fist Podcast. Our SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash Sons of the Dragon, uh, hyphens where the spaces are. Our YouTube, Connor Carl. Just search Iron Fist Podcast and you'll find us real quick. We are also on iTunes. If you find us there, give us a review and rate us. If it's less than five stars, please say why so we can improve the show. And we're on Podcast Garden in the literature section. And last but not least, head over to our WordPress, Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Artist Podcast, WordPress.com. That's where I put all the show notes. I'd like to thank Thomas Tissot for composing the Iron Fist theme song we use at the start of our Iron Fist episodes on the podcast. And I'd also like to thank Peter John Sikorsky for composing the Power Man and Iron Fist theme we use at the start of our Power Man and Iron Fist episodes. And finally, thanks to you guys for listening. <laughs>